Hello everyone, so in this video we'll be looking at the proof of a famous theorem about prime numbers. But before we go into the proof, let's start with the basics. A prime number is a positive integer p greater than 1 whose only positive divisors are 1 and itself. As you can see, the numbers listed on the screen are prime numbers, where you can see the divisors of each prime number below them. So now you can verify that the divisors are actually just one and that prime number itself. Okay, so we've seen what prime numbers are, but how many prime numbers are there? Well, it turns out there are infinitely many. Knowing that there are infinitely many primes is essential because it supports important mathematical theories and has practical applications such as cryptography, which depends on the difficulty of factoring large numbers into their prime components. Okay, so enough of the basics and let's see if we can actually prove this theorem. Okay, so we start off by considering the set of prime numbers less than or equal to a given number x, which we denote as p subscript x. Now, suppose we define a function pi by pi of x being the cardinality of p subscript x. This means that for any given x, pi of x just returns the number of elements in the set p subscript x. This is a well-known function known as the prime counting function. So for example, when x is equal to 10, the prime numbers less than or equal to 10 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So we can see that we have 4 numbers. So pi of 10 will give us 4. Now consider the graph of 1 over t and suppose we wish to estimate the area under that curve from 1 to x. One way we can do this is to plot the graph of 1 over the floor of t and consider the area formed within the interval 1 and floor x plus y. We see that the area of the first plot is less than the area of the second. For those of you who have done calculus, you can easily find the yellow area as the integral of 1 over t from 1 to x, which gives us the natural logarithm of x. For the blue area, we can see that finding its value isn't hard at all, as we just have to find the area of each rectangle formed and sum it up. For the first rectangle, we have a height of 1 and a width of 1, whose area is 1. For the second, we see that we have a rectangle with height of 1 over 2 and a width of 1, and so its area is 1 over 2. We sum the areas of the next rectangles until we reach the end. We now have a useful inequality that will help us in the next phase of this proof. Since we are convinced that this inequality holds for all x greater than or equal to 1, we can choose x as 3.5, where we have the flow of x equal to 3, and then we have that the natural logarithm of 3.5 will be less than 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. Now let's bring back the sets we defined initially and the prime counting function. For x equal to 3.5, we have that p subscript 3.5 contains the numbers 2 and 3 because those are the prime numbers less than or equal to 3.5. Since the set consists of only two elements, pi of 3.5 will be equal to 2. We then introduce another set, n subscript x, which contains all the natural numbers whose prime divisors are all in p subscript x. Using this, we try to construct the sets n subscript 3.5. The first element is 1 since 1 has no prime divisors to check. This is backwardsly true. The remaining elements are all the numbers that can be expressed as products of the primes 2 and 3 in various combinations and powers. We then see that the sum we wrote before will be less than the sum of the reciprocal of each element of n subscript 3.5. 
We can write that sum as the product of 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 square up to infinity and 1 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 square up to infinity, which are both infinite geometric series. And we can see that we can write this as a product of a sum. So we have that the natural logarithm of 3.5 is less than the product over all primes in d subscript 3.5 of the series. It turns out for any x greater than or equal to 1, that inequality actually holds. So I wanted to keep this video short, so I guess I can leave this as an exercise for the viewer. Or if you get stuck, I'll try and add a drive link to the proof I wrote in the description. So moving on, we see that we have an infinite geometric series in the right hand side which we can simplify as p divided by p minus 1. Now, if we write the elements of p subscript x as p1, p2, p3, up to p pi of x, then we can expand that product as p1 over p1 minus 1 times p2 over p2 minus 1 up to p pi of x over p pi of x minus 1, implying that we can write our product as a product of p subscript k over p subscript k minus 1 from k equal to 1 to pi of x. Now I'd like you to convince yourself that the kth term of p subscript x is greater than or equal to k plus 1. And I think that can easily be seen by using mathematical induction. And so p subscript k minus 1 it will be greater than or equal to k. And so 1 over p subscript k minus 1 is less than 1 over k. To see where this is useful, we will write the term in the product as 1 plus 1 divided by p subscript k minus 1. And so we have that product is less than the product of 1 plus 1 over k. Which we can write as k plus 1 divided by k. So I know guys, this has actually been a long proof, but the good thing is that we're almost done. So all we have to do now is to evaluate this product, which when we expand, we get 2 over 1 times 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 up to pi of x plus 1 divided by pi of x. So we can see that this is a telescoping product in which the numerator of the k stem is cancelled out by the denominator of the k plus 1 stem, which leads us to the value pi of x plus 1. And so we have that the natural logarithm of x is less than pi of x plus 1. Also, since pi of x is less than x, it implies that pi of x plus 1 is less than x plus 1. Subtracting each part of the inequality by 1, we get that the natural logarithm of x minus 1 is less than pi of x, which is in turn less than x. And the famous squeeze theorem comes to play its part. So since the natural logarithm of x minus 1 approaches infinity as x approaches infinity, and also x approaches infinity, this implies that pi of x approaches infinity as x goes to infinity. This tells us that as x gets larger, the number of primes less than or equal to x gets bigger, indicating that there are infinitely many primes. So alright guys, that is it for this proof. I appreciate if you like this video and probably share it to someone who you think might find this useful. And yeah, if you've not subscribed, I'll really appreciate if you do. Thank you.